Hi there. Welcome to Draw With Us. Uh, I'm Danny Gregory. This is Twiglet. And Happy New Year. This, remember when uh, we thought that 2021 was going to be a way better year? Couldn't be worse, we said to ourselves. So the events of yesterday are not something that I want to dwell on. I want to simply acknowledge that, yes, there was stuff that went on yesterday that was pretty awful. But um, let's spend 45 minutes, half an hour, just doing something else, not thinking about it, not watching the news, not talking about it. And drawing aminals, right? You like aminals? We have another aminal here. And uh, we are going to just play today. Today's going to be about playing. So get out some stuff. Get out some art supplies. Uh, get out your puppy if you have them. And uh, I'm going to hand this guy off so that... Uh, there you go. Um, so that we can... <sighs> I don't know. Spend some time just not thinking about it, okay? So, uh, um, I'm not sure where to start, but let, let me just start by just getting some, some business out of the way, as they say. Um, I wanted to just tell you that if you're new to this, new to draw with me, if you made a New Year's resolution that you were going to draw on a regular basis and so you've come here to do it, it will be fun, I promise you. Um, if you would like to get some additional stuff from me, namely my weekly email, which I'm going to send out tomorrow. Well, I may not actually send it out tomorrow. I have to say I have been struggling with what to write this week. I'm afraid that everything I think of seems, I don't know, inappropriate. So I might just skip this week. But anyway, in any case, sign up for my weekly essay. You can go to bit.ly slash Danny's essays and uh, get on my mailing list, I promise you it will be worth it in the long run. Despite my slightly subdued mode today, I am here to give you some uh, inspiration and to have fun. Similarly, if you'd like me to send you via text um, some inspiration on a regular basis, I'd look glad to do that too. You can text me at this number, 919-298-8117. So, um, and I'll send you drawings that I'm doing or stuff that I've found that's cool, or at the very least, a reminder to come back next week and draw again. So do it, check it out. And if you want to send me anything or write to me or inform or inspire me, please do. You can via that. What else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about this weekend. This weekend, we have a really cool workshop called Watercolor Magic with my friend David Pyle. And it is, I mean, I wanted to show you couple of uh, paintings that David has made. How beautiful is that? That is Central Park in the snow. And uh, here we have views of, uh, I believe this is in his town in Colorado, where the skies are spacious and gorgeous. And uh, he's just an incredible artist. I really love his work. Um, and he can paint anything. I mean, here is... Uh, a soprano rehearsing, I guess, on the deck and uh, with an accompanist who seems to be wearing a mask. So that must be a pretty recent thing. Yes, September, I think, of this year. Um, and here's a, a railroad crossing with some silos. So, and then look at that. How beautiful. The, I guess the Rockies? Is that what they are have in Colorado? I don't know my geography very, very well, but I do know an amazing artist when I see him. And Watercolor Magic is going to be a really interesting workshop because um, we're really going to learn, if you've never watercolored before, this is an opportunity to learn the, the basics the right way. And if you are an intermediate or even an advanced watercolorist, you're going to learn so much from an artist who really knows his craft, an artist who has an enormous wealth of experience in the world of art supplies as well. And uh, so you can go to sketchbookschool.com, just click on workshops and you can sign up. And uh, the workshop is Saturday at noon. 
Eastern Time. I'm not sure why we keep calling it Eastern Time, seeing as uh, none of us are in the East anymore. But anyway, that's what we do. It is noon Eastern Time, and it will be, I think, a great opportunity to learn, to have fun, and uh, to get in depth with watercolors. So this is, uh, we've extended the sign up until Friday. So you have another day to think about it, although I wouldn't, um, and just get back to this because we need to make some art, right? Let's make some art. And, you know, hanging out with a really accomplished artist with, who is also an amazing teacher. That's the funny thing is like, there's some artists who are amazing artists and not really amazing teachers. There are people who are amazing teachers and not necessarily amazing artists. David is both. And uh, this workshop is going to be really spectacular. So, and if you're a Spark member, of course, don't forget, you get a discount. Or if you're in Danny Circle, you get it for free. So we want you there. So, all right, good. So let's talk about what we're going to draw today. Um, so hopefully you have some, it doesn't really matter what you draw with today. Could be markers, could be pencils, could be crayons. You could draw with a brush, but we're going to work with something very simple and kind of nutty. Honestly, I just was feeling like comfort food, comfort art. I often feel like comfort food, but this is sort of the equivalent of, uh, you know, a nice something, you know, macaroni and cheese or, you know, a, a nice brownie in a glass of milk. It is a drawing experience that I think is just going to be calming, not challenging. If you love to draw, this might give you a different way of looking at it. If you don't really draw that often and you're looking for a way to start today, I think is going to be that. So let's get to it. What do you say? All right. So here we go. This is today's subject. Ed Emberley. Do you know Ed Emberley? Um, Ed Emberley is, uh, he writes these, or made, I don't know if he's still alive even, but he made these beautiful, very simple how to draw books. Um, this one is the drawing book of animals. There's dozens of them that he made. Um, and they all, he has this particular technique of drawing that I think is, appears to be very childlike, but I think, I think there are ways of looking at it that are a bit more sophisticated. And so let's start simply. Okay, I see a lot of you are fans of Ed's. So let's just look at the first page, okay? So he says, if you can draw these shapes, letters, numbers, and things, what are they? Like squares and triangles and circles and a few letters. Um, if you can draw these simple things, you'll be able to draw all the animals in this book. For instance, in order to draw this polywog, right? You use this, a circle, an S, a dot, and a little line. In order to draw this bird, you use these, a circle, a D, a filled in triangle, another triangle, a dot, three lines, a V with a line through it. Okay? I know you can draw these things, right? And if you've taken my class called How to Draw Without Talent, I teach you a certain technique that's similar to this that was actually something I stole from an author named Mona Brooks who, did, who did, wrote a book called Drawing with Children that again helps to break everything down. But these, these are the elements down here, you see? The numbers, dots, large dots, a bird track, a curl a cue. So these are just the basic elements. And we can take this in other places if we want to. But, um, you know, some people have mentioned his books on fingerprints. It's true. He... Uh, did these, this great book where you take a fingerprint, you know, dip it in an ink pad, make a, a shape, and then turn it into something. So, I mean, look at how simple this is. <laughs> I, I love this part. Um, so here, an ant. A brown ant is a brown ant. Brown ant is a brown dot. A green ant is a green one. Here's a brown ant wearing a green sweater. Um, here's an ant saying, hi, polywog. And here's the polywog. Happy polywog and a grumpy polywog. So, all right. So there's pages of this. If you don't have this book, go out and buy it. It's like six bucks, um, just to, just to have fun with. It's kind of like a, you know, when you really just need a break, you just want to, you feel like drawing, but you just don't feel like getting getting all fancy. Um, so you know, all kinds of things that are in here: pelicans and storks, 
roosters, owls, um, a frog, a crab. And again, he takes you through step by step as you build this build this creature and he gives you down below what the elements are going to be. So you think you can do this? Robert wants me to slow down. It's true. I'm going very quickly um, because this is such a complicated subject. But I'm giving you an overview of how this is going to work and then we will settle in and uh, try it. A fox, a wolf. So let's just try, let's just pick something. Uh, I like this pig. It's quite cute. A sitting pig. Um, a pig with a shirt. A pig with trousers. That's really good. I, I, think, I think I might want to do that pig. Octopus. And here's like variations where he takes the same sort of configurations or shapes, but then by changing some of the shapes, you just make different kinds of fishes. Aha, here we go. I think we have to start here, guys. The monkey. There's a gorilla, but let's start with just simply a monkey. And look at that monkey. Come on. Come on. Look at that monkey with a tail, hanging by his tail. Let's try it. What do you say? Get out your, get out your stuff and uh, let's try it out. I'm feeling it. I'm thinking that I want to start with... Um, you know, just, I'm going to use markers. So I'm going to use this, this echo line marker. And um, I'm going to show you the instructions so you can, you can all make sure we're in the same place at the same time. Boy, some of you are just like, this guy's an idiot. What is the name of this book? All right, the name of the book is Ed Emberley's Drawing Book of Animals. I'm sorry, Ed Emberley's Drawing Book of Animals. This, if you just go to Amazon or wherever and just type in Ed Emberley, a gazillion books will show up. Um, this is just the one that I happened to have picked. So, all right. So we start with a square. Is that the right kind of square? Probably. Okay, I'm coloring it in. Just like you said. Did I color it in right? Whoops. You can't see my drawing. Oh, no. There it is. Okay. How can I arrange this so you can see what I'm doing? It's the joy of the squares. I can move it anywhere. All right, let me just get myself organized, folks. Let me just back off a bit. There we go. All right. So, I did plan this out. It may not seem that way, but uh, I did plan it out. So there's a square. I made it nice and big. And then the next shape is uh, kind of another sort of semicircle color that in and then we take two c's you see right down below here it tells you what the element is oh so that's actually a d I'm, i made that i screwed that up because that's actually a d which is which is what i did so you take a c make a c take a c make a c all right then two circles draw a circle draw a circle and then take a U. Here we go. And then we need three dots. But he's suggesting we use a different color. So I'm going to follow along. I'm going to use this brush pen. See, I, did I make a mistake by making this so dark so you can't even see his face? Yep, it's not as easy as it looks. You can't even see his face. Come on. Add a bit more light to the subject. You can sort of see his face. Maybe I need to go back later on and make it white. Okay, so now the next step, four C's, four C's, okay? So we're gonna make a C, we're gonna make a C, we're gonna make a C, we're gonna make a C. And then the final thing is a spiral, which is his tail. There we have it, a monkey. Okay, now you might be saying to yourself, what is the point? What is the point of, of drawing in this way? What kind of paper am I using? I'm using Bristol. Again, but 
the point of doing this kind of drawing, I think, is, well, as I said before, it's relaxing, but there's another thing which is essentially anything that we draw is, um, you know, is something that we break it, we break it down. We break down um, whatever it is we're drawing, we break down into these elements, right? Um, you know, you could be drawing uh, a really complex urban sketching scene and you could look at all the components that make up this street corner, the buildings, the sidewalk, the cars, the traffic lights, and you could break them all down into lines, circles, triangles, shapes. In the end, doing a simple contour drawing is really drawing shapes, drawing the shape above, below, and next to each thing that you draw. So you can break your, you can overcome your sense of intimidation by simply thinking, okay, let me just look at that part. Let me just look at this. I'm going to draw a portrait of me, right? So maybe I might say, you know, in the end, the top of my head is just an upside down C. You can talk yourself through that in order to, at the very least, figure out what the elements of the drawing are. So I think this is kind of, is a useful way of looking at it. And, uh, you know, is, is, but it's also just fun. You know, it's also just fun is, uh, is to just break it down. So let's just do another one. Let's do another monkey. No, can we do another monkey? Yeah, let's do a side view of the monkey. I'm going to take a lighter color this time. Right here, I'm going to take this one. I think this one works. Cool. No, it doesn't. This is the pen. I know that the pen doesn't work. Bastard. All right, here we go. Let's take this. Let's take this guy and draw his side view. Okay, so so we begin with basically a diamond. Don't work either. Okay, he's going to be orange. A diamond. There we go. Okay, so here's a diamond, and uh, there's the diamond, and next we have a D. It's kind of a backwards, upside down D. So, like that. I've got a color in that guy. And then another D inside here. And then a C, backwards C. Have any of you ever used this book with kids? Did you use it yourself as a kid? Did you, um, maybe you're a school teacher and you try that with kids, but um, certainly, I mean, I think this kind of step-by-step -step thing is really, is fun for anybody, but I can certainly imagine it would be fun to do with a kid. And uh, let me just take this marker now, and now I'm going to draw the two dots, which is his eye, and then I guess that's his nose. And... Um, now four C's, the next step. Three, this is challenging because you're not seeing the whole page. Four C's. C, C. Si, muy bien. And then, of course, the curly Q. So, all right. Now, what else could we do with this approach? I mean, we could certainly um, take other media. And we could sort of continue to work on one. I'm going to take some colored pencils here. Um, you know, and we could certainly we could add some texture to him. And we could sort of plus this up a bit if we wanted to. So just sharpening my pencil. Um, you know, we could theoretically we could give him hands if we wanted. You know, we could use this as an opportunity really for, you know, to use our imaginations to develop him further, we could 
color him in. We could give him a bit of an expression. You know, we could add more fur. We could refine that curly cue. Um, you know, we could say, you know, I want to make him actually less less blocky. I want to turn him into something that looks, you know, increase more more three dimensional and less less of a stylized cartoon version. You could add all these elements that that turn, you know, what was a kind of very crude symbolic drawing into something, you know, a bit more. Or, or, or it could just be the basis for really trying to understand how do you draw something like a monkey? Um, like what are the elements that make that give it its monkeyness? You know, in his case, I think it's probably that that big sort of snout and. Uh, so it's sort of crouching point of view, um, but also the top of his head, its relationship to the bottom where the ears are. All those things are, are monkey things, yeah? So that is, that's the monkey. Let's try, let's try that pig back there, because I like that pig. Who was it? What happened to that pig? Pig escaped. Donkey. There we go. There's a pig in t-shirt that I quite liked. All right. You want to draw with me? Let's draw together again. Let's just try this step by step. And uh, begin with... I'm going to make him pink. Because that's, that is the authorized color of pigs. So... Okay, so we're going to draw a circle. Step one. Maybe you don't need the instructions. Maybe you can just follow along with me. Yeah, you know, duh. So you don't need to see exactly his directions. You can just follow my directions. Let's try it that way. Okay, tell me if this works. So there we've got the circle. Now we're going to do two V's. A V and a V. And now we're going to do a D. D. And now we're going to do two lines. I guess those are nostrils. And we're going to do two circles, or two dots. All right. And then we're going to draw another U. Because, of course, he's a smiling pig. You know, if nothing else, learning these skills will make you a big hit with children, possibly with adults too. All right, next we're going to do another C. C. Backward C. And then we're going to do four V's a V, a V, a V, and a V. Kind of a slender pig, and then a tail. All right, and now we're going to give him a t shirt. What kind of t shirt would be good with a pink pig? What color? Come on, people. Let's Give him a blue, blue t shirt. So, t shirt is simply filling that in. And, uh, you know, give him little short sleeves. So, there we go. There it is a, an almost photographically accurate drawing of our porcine friend. All right, how else can I legitimize this intellectually so that we say, you know what, this wasn't just screwing around. This is actually like a very valuable drawing lesson that I gained an enormous amount out of, and it was certainly worth the time and, and expense involved in uh, doing it. All right, let's do a dog, because of course we need to do a dog. Let's do a gray dog. Here we go. Gray dog. Ready? We're going to do um, a, a rectangle. Color it in nicely. And now we're going to draw a circle. 
Okay, and now we're going to draw a C. C, muy bien. And then we're going to color that in, C. Okay, now we're going to take um, our, our other pen. That's a good one. Here we go. We're going to take this. We're going to draw a triangle right there. A triangle that is his snout. Okay, and now we're going to draw two Ds. This one, his ear. And uh, this one, kind of his butt. And uh, maybe I should make it more like that. And then we're going to color those in the black marker and the ear, of course. Starting to look very dog like. Now, what does he need? He needs some dots. Some, you know, he's a spotted dog. All right, and then he needs a spot for his eye, of course. And now he needs um, some legs. Can't have this limbless dog. Four legs, and uh, of course, a tail. What do you think? And then maybe uh, just a little bit of a little bit of a, a front lock there, and uh, let's make him smile. Smiling is the final step of the way. There you go. It's not a bad little uh, thing. I like that. I like that, and it was really easy. Should we keep going? Why not, right? I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. Might be nice to do this with a martini. Then I'd feel like an adult. But, you know, it's not that great being an adult sometimes. Let's do... Let's do a little one. Let's do um, a bulldog. Actually, I like this. Um, there's a, f a fuzzy dog here. I'm gonna do. We're going to do, um, uh, gonna do a hairy, a shaggy dog. Okay. So first, we're going to scribble. Just scribble. And then we're going to scribble some more to make his head. Scribble, scribble, scribble. And then we're going to scribble to make his tail. Scribble, scribble, scribble. And then we're going to make his legs scribble, 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 scribble. And now we're going to take it to the next level by taking, and I strongly recommend, in fact, insist that you use the Pigma Micron 08 with archival ink, because of course this is going to be an archival drawing that we want to make sure that lasts for many centuries. So there we go. Give him a little eye, uh, sorry, snout. Give him a couple of eyes. Kind of peering out of the shag, and uh, of course, a little smile. There we go. You know what? I'm gonna give him a bit of more of an ear treatment there, Maybe a floppy ear, and uh, there you go. Come on, seven years of art school finally paying off. I wish I had seven years of art school. Let's keep going because I think this is this is this is an important lesson for all of us. Um, I like this one. This is going to be an orange dog. Here we go. Orange dog. First we draw a rectangle. Then we draw a circle at one end. Not a circle, a D. Here, D at the other end. And then we draw another D backwards facing D. Okay? And then we draw a triangle. Triangle. Oops. Triangle. Color it in. And then we draw another triangle. Color it in. And another triangle. Color it in. Got it? Three triangles. Sticks. Stick. Oh, I meant to color his butt in. Color this part in. Color that part in. And color this part in. And then... Uh, Yep, it's a wiener dog. It's an orange wiener dog. Yeah, I miss my orange wiener dog, Joe. I drew him many times, never quite this way. But I've always enjoyed drawing wiener dogs. They're fun to draw. They're silly looking. And uh, there's a little dot there, and then there's another dot there. Big juicy 
thing. And then uh, let's make a wiener dog who's wearing a sweater. What do you say? And that's pretty easy. We just color in, color in some, some stripes. And, um, you know, I think I'll make it, let's see if this is a disaster. Yeah, a bit of a disaster, right? That was a mistake. I've tried to color a blue over the orange, and together they made blacks. So and I was basically wearing an extremely dark sweater. Well, there you have it. He's a smile, despite the ugliness of his sweater. Okay, there's a dog, wiener-like, wearing a sweater. Okay, um... Tiger, tiger, tiger. Here we go, tiger. A D. A triangle and another triangle. A line. A black line. Um, a circle. Green-eyed tiger. And uh, a dog. And what else? Um, kind of a cat mouth. And, you know, we want to make him look kind of tough. So he's got a couple of lines there. And then line, 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 line. He's not a lion, but he does have lines. And then, you know, let's make him into a tiger. So there's no doubt about it. That's a tiger, right? Yeah. So, um, have, let's try it. Let's try a lion. So, a lion is a rectangle. There's no curves to him. He's he is. And then there's a D at the bottom. And then there's a rectangle. And then a triangle. And then there's a couple of circles. Circle, ear, circle, ear. And uh, let's make him also green eyed, but slightly different. Green eye, green eye. And um, line, line, dot, dot. What else? Oh, teeth. So here we make a z z ziggy zag there. And uh, let's see if we need to kind of color that in a bit. All right, what else? Oh, of course, a mane. Markers kind of bled into each other, which is fine, but it's mildly annoying. So yeah, there you go. Maybe I can tighten up, tighten up this mouth a bit. I think this, I think this needs to be colored in. I think I sort of screwed up his mouth. Despite following these instructions, you know, it's kind of like when I um, buy something from Ikea and they give you those ex very detailed, sometimes incomprehensible and abstract uh, instructions. And invariably I'm like, oh no, this thing was supposed to go the other way. Uh, it's too late now. Just hammer it in, pound it in, and it'll probably be fine. So sometimes this is a problem.
houses. It seems to be a little bit like that. Okay, how about an owl? Got it? That's gonna do teal owl. Here we go. It's a D. And it's a circle, and it's a circle. And uh, it's a dot, and a dot, and a dot, and a dot. And let's color this in. It's going to be an owl eventually. And now it is. There we go. A C and another C and an upside down triangle. And then some threes. I like that. Three and a three and a three. And then. Uh... Oh, yeah, some legs. So here's a leg and a leg. And here is uh, kind of like a upside down with a V in it. And then let's give him blue eyes. Somewhat uh, phlegmatic, I think. Okay. Let's give him some pupils. Help him a bit more. Doesn't look wise, does he? Let's wise him up. Wise up, Al. Oh yes, he's a an intellectual now. <laughs> okay. That is that is fine. All right, I think we have time to do one more creature. Any votes? All right, I think a chicken would be good. A hen. Or no, a rooster. Okay, rooster. Here we go. Let's make a yellowish rooster. So here's, here we go. There we go, it's a D, an upside down D, or D lying down. Let's take another color, and uh, what color do I want? Green, a light green, and I'm gonna give him a neck, and that neck is gonna be a triangle. Um, and then, let's go back to the yellow, and do two more triangles at the bottom. Triangle, triangle, and then let's do two triangles up here. You with me? Okay. Now, a semicircle, or no, uh, yeah, a semicircle, and then a W. And then let's color that in. Um, and then three C's, three, three C's. And finally, let's take our black pen and do basically a backwards three or an E and then, uh, an I. I'm not sure if I like that color. I think I might need to go back in and. I made some mistakes in my color selection. Um, what else? Oh, we don't want it to be limbless. I like, I like a good chicken leg. There you have it. A chicken. <sighs> that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, maybe we should have drawn, maybe we should make some up, like, we, we, like, how would Ed Emberley draw a pug? I should think about that. What would be the breakdown of a pug? Or what would be the breakdown of me? Like, how could I do a self-portrait the Ed Emberley way? Um, 
you know, I think it's all about reductiveness, reduction, which is something that we've talked about many times before, how you break things down to their essence. And doing that often means really looking at like what makes them, what gives them their roosteriness or their pigness, um, you know, and that is just abstracting to some extent. Um, it's sort of caricaturing, but I think it's also helpful in your more realistic drawings too, to really think about what is the essential of this drawing? Because when we do drawings, we don't need to draw absolutely everything exactly the way that it is. If we do, we're essentially rendering a photograph. <laughs> but um, if we want to show the viewer how we're looking at something, we draw, bring it down to the essentials and we say, these are the things that I am seeing. And I want you to see it through my eyes. That's, I think, always the, poss always the, the process that we go through um, whenever we draw. So this, what we did today was sort of, uh, you know, an exaggerated form of that, but I think it's it still has truth in its in its at its core, and that's what makes it fun. Get this book, or I'm sure you can Google and find examples of it. Emberly step by step drawings, um, you know, on the internet already. But it's just a good way to when you feel like drawing, but you don't really feel like drawing. Um, do some aminals, knock out a page or two. And then maybe you'll be ready to say, okay, now, the Mona Lisa. <laughs> you know, that's the whole thing that uh, at its core, this is meant to be fun. That's, that's all that it is. It's a fun way to be creative, to, uh, to see the world, to see the world more clearly, um, to see the world your own way. So uh, if you ever have the monkey messing with your head and saying like, you know, you can't draw or, oh, it's too hard or so forth, draw a monkey the Ed Emberley way. Draw a monkey and draw a monkey, you know, maybe with a gag on its mouth. A gag, it's probably a, a rectangle, horizontal, maybe with two triangles at the side. Um, you know, the bow behind his head. All right, well, that was really fun. Um, if you are a Spark member, I'll see you in the after party where we will continue to do this and we'll think about other ways of doing it. And I'm going to show you a little film about Ed Emberley that will be fun. If you would like to share your drawings, and I would love to see them, um, you know, please don't forget to post them on social media, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. And next week, we'll put together a little film of all of the aminals that you made and uh, share them at the beginning of the next episode of Draw With Me. So we're here every Thursday at noon Eastern time on YouTube and um, have been for many decades. So uh, if you like to draw, join us. If you like the idea of drawing but can't quite get into it, join us. If you just need an appointment to do something fun, Thursday's noon Eastern time. Hopefully I'll see you this weekend at the workshop with David Pyle, Watercolor Magic. It's going to be a lot of fun and a great way to kick off the year by making some art and, uh, you know, do it rather than watching the news. My suggestion, because whatever's happening is happening and uh, we don't need to let it sort of suck us into its orbit. At least I don't think so. So I'll see you again next week. Uh, thanks for joining me.